Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about that missing window on the 737. We're also going to be talking about that strange smoke that you can see coming from the air conditioning units. And also, will we ever see completely windowless aircraft? Stay tuned. Okay guys, this video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, if you feel that the only thing standing between you and a successful aviation training is your mathematical skills and your physics skills, then I highly recommend you to click the link below, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why that's a good idea later on in the video. So, I'm sure that some of you have experienced this, or if you haven't, you've probably seen memes about it on the internet. And that is when you have been paying that little bit of extra money to book a window seat because you want to see these gorgeous views during takeoff and landing. And you pitch up in the uh, aircraft and you sit down and you realize that your window seat doesn't actually have a window. Right. Why is this? Well, in order to understand this, you need to understand a little bit about the air conditioning system of the 737. So the 737 can have three different sources for air conditioned air. It's either the engines that are feeding bleed air, or it's the APU that is feeding bleed air, or it's an external air conditioning source, okay? Now, the engines and the APU will be feeding the very, very hot air from their, you know, from their bleed air system into two machines called packs. These packs are located in the root of the wing of the aircraft. So when you're boarding, for example, if you look just below the, uh, the wing root, you will see that there are some openings there. These is the this is the opening to the cooling air for the packs. So inside of the packs, the uh, hot air will mix with cool air from outside. It will be air conditioned, and then it's gonna be fit into something called a mix manifold. And the mix manifold is also fed by the uh, external air conditioned air if we're using that. From the mix manifold, the air then has to go into the aircraft. And if you're an experienced flyer, you know that as soon as it starts getting hot inside of the cabin, what do you reach for? The gas per outlets. So you reach up and you start turning those gas per outlets to, to get some air in. <laughs> So if you look through the center of the cabin on the 737, you'll also see that there are these uh, air inlets throughout the center part. So this means that the air that's coming into the aircraft is actually being fed from the top and then it's kind of falling down on you guys. So this means that the air is now taken from the mix manifold, which is, you know, close to the wing root, and then it's coming from above in some way. This means that the air has to get up above you and this is what's happening at those rows. So if you're sitting in row 9, 10 or 11, depending on what kind of seat configuration your airline is using, you might be sitting next to the duct who's leading the air up into the rises for the entire aircraft. All right. The aircraft is divided into three different air conditioning zones. It's the cockpit zone, it's the forward and the aft zone. And I'm going to do a video specifically about the air conditioning system later on. But this is the reason that you might end up sitting next to a windowless window seat. It, in order to avoid this, avoid those three rows. All right. Check out when you're booking, you normally can check out the, uh, the seating configuration. It should tell you that there's no window at that seat. Right. So what about this strange smoke that you sometimes can see coming out of the uh, Gasper outlets? Well, this is actually fairly easy to explain. When we're standing at gate, um, we tend to have the doors open. And if it's a day like today, there's a lot of hot, moist air outside that's going to come in through the doors and it's going to meet the really cool, really dry air coming from our air conditioning system. When that happens, you basically get condensation. So there's not smoke coming out of the gas per outlet. It's actually clouds forming when the cool air hits the warm, humid air from outside. And this is why you will see that as soon as the doors are closed, this is going to decrease. And you might still see a little bit of hint of this if you're taking off and landing in really humid climates. But generally speaking, there will not be anything of that coming in during flight, okay? Because the air that we take from the, from the engines that goes through the packs are being cycled through something called an air cycle machine. And that removes 
a lot of the moisture in the air. And this is why when you're doing long haul flights, for example, you can feel that your skin is getting quite dry. And we also have to tell both our cabin crew and the new pilots coming into the company that you have to drink a lot of water because normally when you're out walking about like this, you get a little bit of moisture in while you're breathing, but in the air of an aircraft, you actually don't get that much. So we tell them you have to drink around two liters per day in order to feel well. Right guys, so what about windowless aircraft then? Well, if you've been following the press during the last week or so, you would have noticed that a, an aircraft manufacturer uh, came out with a concept aircraft that was completely windowless. All right. Instead of windows, uh, they had fitted these uh, curved OLED screens entire, you know, in the entire cabin of the aircraft. And that would show either the outside conditions, so it would basically feel like you know, flying in a glass bowl, or it could show anything that you can think about, from movies to pictures of your destinations to floating in space. It was really, really cool. From, a, uh, from an aircraft manufacturer point of view, it makes sense because the, uh, the windows tends to be quite heavy. If you can remove them, you remove a lot of weight from the aircraft. And also the reinforcements around the windows can be removed. So in, in total, you could remove a lot of weight, which means better fuel economy for the aircraft, which means better range. And also the windows are slightly less aerodynamic than the rest of the surface. So it will become more aerodynamic as well. But will it actually happen? That's the question. And that's the question that you guys have been asking me. Now, what you have to understand is that windows is not only there for your uh, enjoyment, all right? It is actually a safety feature. If you've seen my video about why the um, cabin lights are being dimmed during takeoff and landing in dark conditions and why you have to put up your window blinds, you will know why that is. And in short, the reason that we do this is because your eyes need to be adapted to the outside conditions in case we would have to evacuate the aircraft. So if we, something would happen during the takeoff and landing and we quickly would need to get the aircraft to stop and evacuate you guys, your eyes need to be adapted so that you don't feel like you're jumping into a black hole as you're going out through the slides. And also the window blinds have to be open because you might want to see that there's something outside. Maybe there's a fire outside or something that you want to avoid. So seeing out through the windows is actually a critical safety feature. Now, what you can deduct from this is that if there are no windows, there's only screens, if you would have a catastrophic event of whatever kind that would cut the electricity uh, to the screens, it means that you don't have this ability anymore. You can't look outside. And this is why I think that it's highly unlikely that the, uh, that the aircraft manufacturers are going to get this through the aviation authorities. What I do think though, is I do think that we'll probably get to see some kind of hybrid going forward. Maybe with a bit less windows, right? Or windows in only specific places and then screens covering the rest. Uh, and I think it's going to look really, really cool. And talking about cool things, guys, I hope you've checked out my, um, my Instagram feed. If you guys want to see more of what I'm doing every day, as in pictures from me meeting you guys or pictures from the cockpit or, or whatever, pictures from my life, then check out my Instagram feed. Um, that's, that's where I'm posting these things for you guys to see. I also really, really want you to check out the sponsor of this video, brilliant.org. All right, now the reason that I let Brilliant sponsor my videos is because they are providing a service that I would have liked to have myself when I was younger. They are providing a service where learning maths and physics is actually fun and enjoyable. And I'm getting, I know that this works because I'm getting a lot of feedback from you guys and they are getting a lot of feedback that people who have been struggling with maths and physics and have been using brilliant.org has actually improved and they feel themselves that they're improving. So use the link below by using it the 500 first of you guys who click it will get a 20% discount of the annual fee for Brilliant but it's completely free to check it out. So do so and let me know if you are one of the ones who felt that you've been helped by this service. All right, guys, that's all for today. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. I hope you're following your dreams and you're working hard to achieve them. Um, also, another tool that I am trying to, to, um, to get to you is my new website, mentorpilot.com. If you haven't checked it out, do so. Um, we, I'm, I'm putting in blog posts there. There are links to all of my different social media accounts and to my, um, to my applications as well. Uh, and, and I want feedback from you guys. What do you think about it? Okay. I have aviation news coming in. So if you want to know stuff that's happening in the aviation world and there's a chat in there as well. 
And I will also soon be starting to feature flight schools in there. Flight schools that I have checked out and that I can guarantee, not guarantee, but that I can tell you guys that I think are going to serve your needs. So check out mentorpilot.com, check out Brilliant and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.